this video, we're going to create a form in Excel VBA that will allow us to input records into a data set. It will also allow us to perform a search based on a search value in that data set. It will also allow us to update records in that data set. So what you see here is the finished product of what we're going to build today. I have employee records here to the right. To the left, I have our form. And if I want to input a new record, I can add a new employee. Click Submit, and this employee should be added to the bottom of our existing data set. I can also perform a search based on the employee ID number. So if I wanted to pull up Grace Anderson, I simply type in her ID number, click search, and it brings up her records. I can also update her records. So if her last name changed and she transferred to a different department, her records should change to the new information once I click update. And there it is. So on a new blank workbook, we'll get started. So in this example, we're actually going to build a form on the spreadsheet itself, which is a little different from using a form in VBA, which you can actually insert via the editor window. For now, we're going to keep it simple and just create one on the spreadsheet. I will cover the other method in future videos. So the first thing I want to do is highlight these cells here. I'm going to add a shade and in every other cell I'm going to select while holding down the control button. This will allow you to select multiple cells at once. I'm going to add a thick outside border. In this middle column I'm going to select just the cells there. Change the fill back to no fill because these are our input cells going to add labels over here. Now these two cells here we want drop down list. So I'm going to click in this first one, go up to data and then data validation. I'm going to select list and in our source I'm going to type the department names. Have our values there. Going to do the same thing for gender. So now we want to write code that takes the values that are input in these cells and places them at the bottom of our data set here. So we want to go into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click and go to insert module. I'm going to begin with the keyword sub for subroutine and we'll name this submit. So the first thing I want to do is declare some variables. The first one's going to be called WB for workbook. It's going to be as the data type workbook. Next one's going to be WS for worksheet and it's going to be as the data type worksheet. The final one is going to be last row and it's going to be as the data type long because it's a number. And what that's going to represent is the last row plus one in our data set. It's going to find the last row containing values, add one to that number so we can always get the first blank row to add our new data from over here. So we need to define our variables for our object variables which are workbook and worksheet we need to use the keyword set. This is going to be equal to and here I can hit control and spacebar. I get a help list. I can start typing this workbook. Hit tab to fill it in because this is going to be equal to the workbook we're in now. Our worksheet variable is going to be equal to the workbook variable we just created and then worksheets and the sheet we're on now which is sheet one. The last row variable is not an object variable, so we don't need to use the keyword set. And what we want to do 
is find the last row containing values in column I because we always know we're going to have data there and add one to that because that will be the first blank row. With our worksheet variable, we want to use cells and that has a row and a column index. For the row index, we want to list rows and then count because that will count every single row on our spreadsheet. And we want column I, which is column number nine. So this will take us to the very last row in column I, will be at the very bottom of our spreadsheet. From there, we want to end Excel up because that will be the equivalent of control up arrow. That will take us to the last row containing values in column nine. We wanna get the row number, so we state row, and then we want to add one to that because that will be the first empty cell in column I. So now what we wanna do is insert a with statement because we want to do multiple things with our worksheet variable. We want to take each of the values in each of these cells and move them to the columns over here in our last row. So with our worksheet, we again want to use cells. We want to reference our last row variable. We're going to start in column I, which is column nine. We want that to be equal to our range D2, which is the employee ID input box. Now we're going to repeat these steps here, so I can copy this four more times and change our references. D4, D6, D8, and D10. Finally, we're done doing everything we want to do with our worksheet variable. So we're going to say end with. So I'll save this. We want to insert a button that says submit and link our code we just created to that button. So up in the developer ribbon, I'm going to go to insert and then click this first button icon. I'm going to draw button here, link our code to it. So I'm going to right click, edit the text, change this to submit, and we'll add a new record here. When I hit submit, this should add a new record to the bottom of our list. And there it is. So now what we want to do is create our second macro button, which will clear the values in these cells so we can input our next record. So I'm going to add a new subroutine. We're going to call this clear. We're going to copy some of this code because we're gonna be on the same workbook and worksheet. We don't need that last row variable for this subroutine. So with our worksheet variable in the range D2 through D10, we want to clear the contents. We also in our first subroutine, the submit subroutine, after we have completed all the steps, we want to automatically clear out the data in those cells. So we'll call the clear function, or subroutine, I should say. It's not a function. So I'm going to copy this button, paste it here. I'm going to right click, edit the text call this clear. I'm going to right click again, assign macro and the clear subroutine. So I'll click this and you can see the values in those cells go away. So if we add a new record, once we hit submit and the new data is added, the values here should 
clear out. So now we want to add our third macro button, which will be a search button. And we want to be able to input an employee ID in this field here, hit search, and search our data set, pull back the records, and populate them in these other four cells here. We're going to add a new subroutine called search. I'm going to copy our object variables again from our previous subroutine. We're going to add a couple more variables. The first one's going to be called S value for search value. It's going to be as the data type long because it's going to represent whatever employee ID number is stored in cell D2. Our next variable is going to be a search row. It's going to be as the data type long as well. It's going to represent the row on which the employee ID number is found in column I. Our search value is just going to be equal to our worksheet object and then range cell D2. Our search row is going to be equal to our worksheet object variable and then the range we want to look at column I. Use the find method and the first input, first and only required input is what we want to search on. Well, we want to search on our search value variable, whatever's stored in that variable. We want to get that row number. So now we have another with statement because we want to, in these four cells here on our existing worksheet, populate the values that are found in our search row variable for each of these four columns, first name through gender. So in our range cell D4, we want that to be equal to cells our row index is going to be our search row variable and then our column is going to be column 10 because that's the first name. So I'm going to copy this and repeat and just change our cell references. D10. Column 11, 12, and 13. End our with statement. So what we'd also like to do is add an error message in the event that we search on an employee ID number that's not found in our data set. So we're going to list the syntax on error and then go to. Go to is one word, and then list a reference text which we'll just call this error message below our end with we'll say state what we want to do once we hit this error message so we want to exit the subroutine and then we want to reference our error message that we stated up top add a colon and then I'm gonna hit control and space start typing MSG box that's message box method and we just simply want to display the text employee ID not found so I'll hit save copy this button, right click, edit the text, change this to search, I'm going to right click again, assign the macro search. So now if I want to pull up Grace Cox's employee ID information, hit search and her data populates in these cells. So if I input an employee ID that's not on the list and hit search, we get our 
error message that says employee ID not found. So our final button will be to update an existing record in our data set. So we're going to add a final subroutine called update. I'm going to copy some of our previous code here. So rather than search value, we'll call this update value. We'll leave the search row as is because we're still going to search on a row. So we want to take the new values that are input into the range D4 through D10 and update an existing record. So again, we're going to use a with statement and with our current worksheet. This time we want to reference our cells and our search row variable beginning in column 10. that's going to be equal to our range cell D4. Copy some more of this code up here. I'm going to have that same error message. Copy our button, paste it. this update and assign our update subroutine to it. So we're going to clear that out and let's just say Grace Cox got married, her name changed. So first we want to pull up her records, so we want to search change her last name to Anderson and let's say she transferred to accounting. So once I hit update what we should see are these two fields change to the new information. If you like what you saw today please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.